Here we are then, the final round to get the Q12 champion of 2007 and that £1,000 cash prize. But it's the title, really. It's the honour. Four of the top players in Britain have got here on full credit and good luck to you all. Last round is very simple. It's first to 12 points. But get a question wrong, you lose a life. And you only have three lives. For £1,000... And more importantly, that title. Fingers on buzzers, and good luck to you all. Full name wanted. First designed by Tommy Flowers and used in 1957, this first one was the size of a van and could only create 2,000 in one hour. What does the acronym Ernie stand for? Eight, Mark Kerr. Uh, electronic random number indicating equipment. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. Only 11 more to go. Where might find Ernie acting the role of the naive troublemaker and Bert the work? Seven, Pat Gibson. Sesame Street. It is Sesame Street. Sometimes cited as being a European edition, usually regarded as being part of an original Mid Middle Eastern work, which tale features a cave that opens? Six, Kevin Ashman. Aladdin. <laughs> no. Oh. Eight, Mark Kerr. Ali Babra and the Forty Thieves. Ali Babra and the Forty Thieves. Ah, oh, just a hundredth second behind, a hundredth second behind. But Kevin, it's rare we see that from you. Fingers or buzzers? Which stone celebrates a 40th wedding? Ten, Diane Halligan. Ruby. It is Ruby. <laughs> On B Unique Records, who had a number one with... Eight, Mark Kerr. Kaiser Chiefs. Very smart, very smart. I was going to say Ruby, of course. An English syllabic abbreviation. In what urban area of Johannesburg did the Kaiser cheat? Six, Kevin Ashman. Soweto. Well done, redeemed yourself, Kevin. Mm. Named the Gauteng, or Gauteng, G-A-U-T-E-N-G, township, where, on March 21st, 96... Kevin Ashman. Sharpville. Well answered. Oh. Very good. Sharpville, indeed. <laughs> the riot. What's the Christian name of the eponymous hero of Bernard Cornwell's Sharp? Six. Kevin Ashman. Richard. Richard, indeed. Richard Sharp. Very good. What's the administrative centre of Cornwall? Eight. Mark Kerr. Truro. Very quick. Truro it is. To what does Truro owe its designation as a stannery town? Ten, Diane Halligan. Tin Mining. Tin Mining. You seem to have got homegrown support here, Diane. <laughs> they're, they're cheering for you. In which TV series was there a house person called Tintin? Eight, Mark Kerr. Um, oh, I've forgotten. Pass. Ten, Diane Halligan. Thunderbirds. It was Thunderbirds. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Time, though. I was beginning to do a little romp here. Striggy forms comprise which order of usually solitary and... A Seven, Pat Gibson. Owls. Superb, superb, well done. Who wrote The Owl and the Pussy? Ten, Diane Halligan. Edward Lear. Edward Lear. <laughs> go, Diane, go, they're screaming. Which British football league team are nicknamed the Owls? Eight, Mark Kerr. Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday, well done, Mark. In which sport do teams play in a round-robin series of home-and-away matches against every other team? The two highest-ranked teams play a final for the Pura Cup, P-U-R-A, formerly known as the... Six, Kevin Ashman. Cricket. It is cricket. Mm. Formerly known as the Sheffield Shield, Australia's first domestic first-class competition. What's the maximum width of a cricket bat? Mm, is anybody going to risk that one? Don't blame you. Don't blame you. Audience? Four and a quarter inches. Four and a quarter inches is absolutely right. Well done. If centi, C-E-N-T-I, is the prefix which multiplies a unit by ten to the power of minus two, what indicates ten to the power of minus... Kevin Ashman. I see. No. Oh, misunderstood, sorry. I'll complete the question, and you lose a second life, Kevin. 
What indicates 10 to the power of minus 9? 7. Pat Gibson. Nano. It is Nano. Oh. It's one of those sneaky questions that the question isn't asked until the last word. Of which country was Fatos Nano the 34th, 39th? 6. Kevin Ashman. Albania. Well done. Oh, dear <laughs> me. Oh, oh, oh. In which modern day capital city was Agnes Box? Seven, Pat Gibson. Skopje. Well done indeed, of course. For those of you who, like me, didn't realise it was Mother Teresa, uh, she was born in Skopje. Well done. What happened to around 1,100 people on July the 26th, 1963, in Skopje? Six, Kevin Ashman. An earthquake. It was an earthquake. <coughs> Um, a quick look at the score, please. Well, Jeremy, as we would expect, this final is extremely tight. Kevin has just gone into the lead with answering that question on six points. Mark Kerr just behind him on five. And Diane and Pat both on four points. Uh, this final may yet rest on the lives that are left, though. Let's see. Kevin's only got one left. So most points, but only one life left. Yeah. What term describes the point at ground level directly above an earthquake's... Seven. Pat Gibson. Epicenter. Epicenter. Who am I describing? An earthquake is erupting, but not on Orange Street, where lyrics written in a tribute to which artist, born Cecil Campbell, during the 60s and onwards wrote, produced, and performed hundreds of songs for Blue Beat Records, this scar icon... Eight. Mark Kerr. Prince Buster. Excellent answer. Oh, dear me. <laughs> Prince Buster, that was a tough question. Well done, Mark. Give either weight at which Prince Nassim Hamid won titles. <laughs> Only 18 to choose from. No, the tactics here, no one wants to risk a life. Nobody wants to risk a life. Audience. Feather was one, Bantam was the other. A perfect square for breaking every major bone in Anthony Bergen's body by crossing a solid white line on a blind road at 90 miles per hour. How many weeks did Nassim Hamid spend in prison despite four previous conviction and a year's ban? Nobody's going to gamble. Don't blame you. It was 16 weeks. I need an immediate answer to this. Fingers and buzzers. How many days in 16 weeks? Seven, Pat Gibson. One, one, two. One, one, two is correct. <laughs> How fast was that? One, one, sec one and a half seconds. One and a half seconds to do that, that's slow. <laughs> <laughs> when in the United States, to what three digit number does dialing one? 10, Diane Halligan. <laughs> it's gonna say the emergency service is not a clue. Six, Kevin Ashman. Nine, nine, nine. Kevin, I'm, I'm amazed, shocked, uh, because I... I'll never go to Aladdin again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pantomime is so, not your yeah. forte. No, no, no. As, so. well, a brilliant play, <laughs> you're going to kick yourself. Oh, yeah. Because the question yeah. is still live. When in the United States, to what three-digit number does dialing 112 automatically divert, it being the American equivalent? Seven, Pat Gibson. 911. 911. Give the French term for that award given to Fahrenheit 911 in 2004 as the highest prize given... Eight, Mark Kerr. Palm d'Or. Palm d'Or. Name the railway engine and express service introduced in 1926 between London and Paris, known in France as La... F Eight. Mark Kerr. The uh, Golden Arrow. Well done. It was a fresh door, the Golden Arrow. Forgetting Rontgenium and its pathetic half-life of 3.6 seconds, name any element adjacent to gold in the periodic table by virtue of being in the same group or period. Seven, Pat Gibson. Platinum. Platinum is right. 
You could have also had silver or mercury. What was Freddie Mercury's original... Eight, Mark Kerr, Farouk Bulsara. Well done. Could have been anything there. Quick look at the score, please. OK, well, uh, as we know, we've lost Kevin, but Diane has four points, and almost neck and neck are pattern marked between them with eight and nine, respectively. And lives? Lives left. Well, Diane has two left. Pat has three. Mark has two. Pain canny game, all of you. Good luck. With which African country did the archipelago of Zanzibar come? Seven. Pat Gibson. Well, they joined with Tanganyika to make Tanzania. Superb. Full complete. Tanganyika. Which freshwater lake relegates Lake Tanganyika to second in terms of volume? At Seven. Pat Gibson. Lake Victoria. Not Lake Victoria, Pat. Not Lake Victoria. The question is still open. Which freshwater lake relegates Lake Tanganyika to second in terms of volume and depth in the world? Eight. Mark Kerr. Lake Baikal. Well remembered. Well done. <laughs> Olkhon, O-L-K-H-O-N, Olkhon, the largest island in Lake Bakail, is the second largest... Seven. Pat Gibson. It has uh, indigenous seals. I beg your pardon. Indigenous seals. Freshwater seals. No, that's not the question. Not the question. Lose another life there. Depressing good. Oh, this is really, really turning up. The question is still open. Olkan, the largest island in Lake Bacal, is the second largest lake-bound island in the world after Manitoulin Island. In which of the Great Lakes is this home of, quotes, the largest island in a lake on an island in a lake in the world? Ten. Diane Halligan. Ontario. No. Had to go for it. Yeah, it was worth it. That was worth it. You still, it's still there though. Do you want to? You're not going to risk it. No, I was only for it. It's four left, but no, I'll leave it. No. Audience, anyone? Huron. Huron. This is a real. Here we go. What nickname is given to residents of the Lower Peninsula of Michigan, given in that they live under, i.e., south of the Mackinac Bridge? Derived from the story of the three Billy Goats Gruff and the creature that lived beneath... Ten, Diane Halligan. Trolls. Troll, well done. <laughs> William, Bill Huggins and the Sir Nameless Tom and Bert are three trolls that first appear in which book by J.R.R. Tolkien? Bill Huggins, Tom and Bert. <laughs> Seven, Pat You're Gibson. You're going to risk it. The Hobbit. They're petrified. It is The Hobbit. Well played. <laughs> that was a gamble. That was a real gamble. Well played. Four marks for courage. Full marks for courage on that one. What does J.R.R. stand... Ten, Diane Halligan. James Ronald Ruel. Ruel. No. It's Eight, Mark... Uh, John Ronald Ruel. Yes. Oh. Oh, my word. Diane. Heat I, at the moment. Just. And you, you stormed to begin. <laughs> stormed it, stormed it, stormed it. So, two players left for the title. Q12 2012. 2012. 2007 champion. Remember who's driving home, by the way, Pat? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark needs one point. Pat needs two. It terrifies me. I don't know what it's like for you. Good luck to you both. Good luck to you both. Well done. Give the placeholder name used in the United States for a male party in a legal action or legal... Eight. Mark Kerr. John Doe. It is John Doe! <laughs> It couldn't have been closer, it couldn't have been more exciting. 
Uh, when you get players of this quality, terrified to press the buzzer, when they know the answer, should they or shouldn't they? When you get the quality of Kevin Ashman, you know, confusing his pantomimes. <laughs> it just goes to show there's an awful lot of nerves being hidden by these very brave players. But a brilliant victory, Mark. Absolutely brilliant. And fantastic, Pat, as always. Marvellous play from you all. It's been very, very exciting. It only leaves me to sort of come over and unfortunately have to give you over a thousand pounds. <laughs> but I'm pleased to do it. <laughs> well, what a fantastic final. A great winner, great finalists. In fact, the whole series has obviously been terrific. And to sit here with all these magnificent quiz players is a genuine thrill for me. So I'm delighted to be here. But uh, let's go over to our executive producer who's put it all together. <laughs> And as executive producer, was it really worth all the agony, the trouble? Uh, there wasn't that much agony and not that much trouble, actually, in retrospect. Uh, I did enjoy every aspect of it, setting the questions, uh, doing the film and travelling to places. But that's <laughs> not being patronising or anything. Actually, coming, uh, going to places and meeting people who have never met before. At the end of that table over there, we've got a lot of people who have come a long way. We've got Judith, who's come all the way from Ireland, and we've got the, the Geordie contingent, who will be entering the team competition. I hope we've got Mike and Keith and, and Dave there. Was it worth coming over? Yes, it certainly was. I enjoyed every minute of it. Would you play Q12 again if you had the opportunity? Oh, yes. yes. How about you guys from the North East? I actually thought uh, Keith played a great strategy in the first game I saw you play. Well, I played, but I, I don't know if the strategy was the best. But I know we are looking forward to the next opportunity we'll get to take part in this quiz, Steve, because uh, it's a fantastic, exciting quiz, and we've all thoroughly enjoyed having a go at it and bring it on the next time. That's all I can say. You really went for it. You couldn't resist answering the questions, whereas tactically it may not have sometimes been the best move, but it certainly made for a great game. So as a piece of sportsmanship, it was terrific. Um, Another person who's come along today, uh, a long way today is uh, Rob Hanna, who came all the way from Torquay. Uh, now, when we've actually played in Torquay, I suppose the acid test of whether this was worth uh, organising or not was uh, if only one person turned up, would you enjoy it? And you know, when I actually go to YouTube and look at the films, I actually like looking at the Torquay film the most because I met this chap over here and I'm going to hand the microphone to him and say, uh, Rob, I hope you had the jo enjoyed the journey. I always maintain with players that if they walk away and they don't get through to the final or win or even get knocked out in the first round, I won't be too cheesed off with it. But if you don't make any friends, that will cheese me off. Have you made any friends in 2007 doing this? Yeah, I mean, I've made loads of friends uh, doing all sorts of... I mean, this is my first year, really, on, in, in any kind of quizzing circuit, really, and uh, I've made a lot of friends, yeah. I was kind of hoping for another walkover today, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, everybody turned up. But, you know, I, I, I had a good time. I, I got to the second round, which was my aim, so I'm happy. So. I actually thought, Rob, if you got through to the second round, I thought you'd have gone all the way on your idiosyncratic knowledge, having played you on a Thursday night on the online quiz. Another <laughs> participant in the online quiz is Chris Curtis. Now... Uh, you, Chris, I'm afraid are the massive underachiever for me in Q12 this year. Each time I thought you were going to go through and uh, set the world on fire. And unfortunately, what a trip up really uh, on, on this particular round. Yeah, I, I was very disappointed because in the second round in the final, I knew several of the questions and would have got through very easily. And in my heat, I got a question wrong for lots of points early on and was always playing catch up and then took one chance too many. And uh, I didn't make it, but I shall be back next year. Well, be behind you, we've got Darren Martin. Uh, Darren, who did all the donkey work over at, uh, uh, at Liverpool when we played there against probably the strongest lineup apart from the final that we've had in Q12. And Darren, it kind of all just went a bit pear shaped for you today. You, you, did you watch the final? It all turned to shit. Better? It did all turn to shit. What was that word again? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Ray Neal was my cup final. Okay. And well, I was shit today. Can we uh, look forward to seeing you playing again? Oh, yeah, I'll be back next year. I enjoyed it, and uh, I would like to thank you for uh, your efforts you put in. Well, that's very kind, but I'm disappointed you didn't get rocking all over the world, quite honestly. Well, well I was, I'd already through by then. While we're over at this side, we might as well uh, ask Diane. Uh, uh, Diane, I've known Diane in, in the Leeds area quizzing for a, a long time. Sitting there... Uh, you got in on the wing and a prayer after the second round, which was terrific. 
And at one stage, I believe the scores were everybody was hovering about the three mark. I may have been looking at live, I'm not sure, but there's people on four, three, and two lives, and you were all in contention. And then all of a sudden, yourself and Kevin and Pat, what, I've never played it. What happens? I think self-doubt sets in for a start and you get one wrong and then it's very hard after that to sort of pick yourself up. Um, you're always looking at the lives, you're always worrying that if you get another one wrong you're down to one life and then at the last minute then you just can't buzz. It's, it's really hard. <laughs> well, it's a hell of a game to play. Uh, Jeremy, uh, you kind of the first time you've seen it today in the round 12 and the final. Mm -hmm. And you've seen some. It showed, did it? So you've, seen some, <laughs> you've seen some absolutely terrific players who are sitting around mm -hmm. the periphery, and there's one or two handy players in between us. Did you enjoy asking questions for this calibre of player? Oh, it, it, it's, it's genuinely a, a thrill. It, it is an honour to actually you know, be in the same presence as these guys because they are heroes. These are guys that can take anybody in the world on, literally, uh, uh, international quizzing. No, no two ways about it. Very, it, it. very difficult to write an international quiz, but I have absolutely no doubt that Britain would floor the world mm. Well, anybody on this table. The captain of the British team would probably be one of the two people sitting next to you. Kevin Ashman, a, we've discussed quiz endlessly in pubs in Hay on Wire, in Kent and all these places. Could I hazard a guess that perhaps the wall was on, uh, the writing was on the wall, on the Trajan question in round two at Kent, which you actually blew six points on, and it, it indicates that this quiz has a capricious nature which can easily catch up with you. Yeah, very much. Um, <clears throat> once you put yourself onto the back foot by making an incorrect interruption, whether it's in that round or whether it's in the final where you only have three lives, then you are playing a form of catch-up and you have to be so careful which means you can't perhaps come, well, it didn't stop me. Uh, you can't come in quite as fast as you ought to. Um, but yes, yeah, it's just one of those things. You make a silly mistake, as I did losing my first life in the final today, knowing the correct answer perfectly well, but the wrong word coming out of my mouth. And then after that, you, you know, you're, you're chasing. And it uh, just takes one or two, two quick interruptions later on, and, and that's it. But also in that second round, as you said, if you lose six points, that's, that's a lot of points to lose. Yeah. And you really have to go some then to try and make them back up again. What a second round it was today as well. Lots of pe oh, two people in positive figures at one stage. Yeah, it was a very exciting second round. That I mean, everybody was being very cautious, <laughs> and that oh, made for some. Nice um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, almost everyone was being very cautious, <laughs> and uh, you know it, it actually got very exciting. Though. Hey, I, I, I should imagine that the quietest Q12 has ever been, apart from five minutes before the, Q, uh, the Torquay round, was uh, when you actually went out. The, 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 you could, it was palpable, uh, the horror when you actually dropped out. But you did leave the way open for your old friend there, Pat Gibson. Pat, oh, nobody could have picked the winner between you and Mark, but the lives went. And, and there were very good guesses as well, uh, which you must have thought had a, a good chance of being correct in that last round. Well, I'd, I'd been a bit, bit passive early on. And then I had a good spell when I started accumulating points, and then I made two mistakes on those late questions, which should be meat and drink to me. Mm. Uh, I just uh, perhaps went a bit quickly and uh, didn't answer them very well. I knew the answer to both of them, but I didn't manage to deliver. We them. saw Dave, uh, Dave Taylor over in... Uh, did you see the Newcastle film? Well, Dave came back from way behind with his lives intact, and it looked like you were sitting pretty. You had three lives. I was in good shape. It was, it was just um, 20 seconds of careless play. Uh, did me in. But that's the nature of competition. You can't afford 20 seconds of careless play. <laughs> uh, I know Peter, the, our wonderful announcer, did mention earlier on that you had been back to the hilt, and nobody had put more money on you than the person who is between us now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, <laughs> I can't, words fail me with Mark uh, so no words don't fail me with Mark uh, this bloke has been a constant supporter of the quizzes which I've tried to organise he's actually always been a real contender and in this the most important thing I've ever made uh, you've come through and you came through in style at the end we still haven't had an 11 all you won by 12 points <laughs> to 10 I believe Did you, were you absolutely certain you were right on that last question oh yeah what was the clincher for you? On the last question? Uh, no, the clincher for you during the round. Was it the, the JRR Tolkien? 
Um, well, that was unfortunate because it was a double whammy, really, because first of all, uh, it knocked out Diane, just leaving me and Pat, and then secondly, it put me on to, I think, 11 points. So I knew I was only one, way, one point away from winning. So, nice position to be in. Uh, you, before I'd put you at eight to one, along with a few other people, I think eight to one around with the, 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 these great players, you didn't fancy backing yourself at eight to one? No, no, I wasn't going to waste my money. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather put my money on Pat. I'm sure everybody who knows you from the past and the quiz you've participated in, whether they've seen you or participated against you, realises that the potential to win is, is actually no big surprise. You're actually winning this. Mm. Uh, it was just absolutely wonderful the style in which you did it. An absolutely brilliant second round when you were 15 nil up after you'd been 6 nil up at Liverpool, you'd mm. been 6 nil up before, and it, it seems like the kiss of death going in first on that second round. But what was it like looking at the board and you thinking, hang on, I'm on 15 and everybody else is on 1 and 0? It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see my name above Pat and Kevin. It, I mean, I can never get tired of seeing it, to be honest with you. And the nice thing is, you were actually comfortable and could have pressed in another couple more on that, that, that round too. I, I, yeah, but I would have got them wrong if I'd pressed in on the other <gasps> ones. So I'm glad I just got the 15 points and just sat on my hands. They came at the right time. Well, there's only one thing to do, and that's to hand over to Jeremy, who will in turn give you your just desserts. And I'm sure that everybody watching will give a round of appreciation to yourselves. To Will, who has been uphill and down Dale for absolutely nothing whatsoever. Peter Brook, who if anybody's going to get a job out of television, it should be him. Jeremy Beadle, who just might get a job out of television, <laughs> if he puts his mind to it. Uh, my family, who have been absolutely wonderful and tolerated my extremely bad behaviour, especially Jake, the cameraman, who has been to every single round, never complained once. <laughs> and... Uh, Especially today's winner, Mark Kerr of Rainhill in Merseyside, Q12 champion, 2007. Thank you, everybody. Minor detail.